welcome to Damon's Metal Casting. It's time to pour some hot metal in a hole. On this video, I decided to do a nameplate because why? Just for gits and shiggles. So I did a nameplate. I couldn't think of a name because I don't really give a flip. So I just used a bunch of letters and I made this nameplate right here. Um, this nameplate was 3D printed and then it was uh, used with uh, spotting putty and the spotting putty was diluted with acetone a little bit and then brushed on. And you can just see how smooth that is. So that's gonna give a good cast. That's gonna give a really good cast right there. So also I included some software, uh, little shots of what software I use to be able to make this also, because we all know if you cast something, it helps to have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a uh, taper on the edges. So that way your sand pulls out really nice. So let's go ahead and get started. So this program is a layout program called Inkscape. The reason I use Inkscape instead of a paint program is because it gives me layers. So I can actually do lettering and just make the letters a certain color. They'll stay on a layer. And then if you look over to the right, you can actually see the alignment button. So after I put on these forms or squares and letters, I can go ahead and have it auto aligned, which you, you need or else your stuff is gonna look really wonky. So anyway, this is what I use to lay everything out and make the original graphics file. I use Win3D Builder to go ahead and import the graphics file into, then I can make a height map. Up at the top, it gives me some sliders, it lets me do a little bit of a color depth and also do a smoothness. You can go ahead and mess with those a little bit until you get what you want. And then you also, you can actually cut the nameplate or whatever you're doing in half at a certain point, wherever it suits you. And here's the nameplate again, and it's settled on the bottom of the three-dimensional program, so that way I can export it as a 3D file. Preferably, I like STLs because they import well into the 3D printing program. I just use Cura. It's a real popular program. There's the sign down on the bottom of it, and I set my parameters for my 3D printer, and off it goes. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video where I put a little bit of acetone and spotting putty together and then just paint it on the surface of the 3D print. I can sand it and that spotting putty sands really well so you can get some really fine edges and stuff and get rid of the three-dimensional um, steps that you see with the 3D printer. Here's the sign again, just with a little bit of primer on it. I can sand this a little bit more and then I'll coat the top of it with epoxy. I feel like the epoxy actually makes a really great surface that the sand doesn't want to stick to. So here's the pattern all painted with epoxy. And then I'm just gonna put on some talc on it. I use talc, if you don't like using talc, you can substitute with baby powder. I just like the way talc works and I use a respirator. Also, you'll notice I uh, dramatically sped this up to uh, comply with the ADHD requirements of most YouTube watchers nowadays. So we'll just go ahead and go through this fairly quick. If you need uh, a better explanation of what's going on here, you're welcome to look at my other videos when I pack up other molds and I do it a lot slower and talk about it a lot more. So I'd probably say in this video right here, one of the key takeaways is to make sure you don't have any loose sand in your mold to fall back into the mold cavity and leave pitting on your part. So I use compressed air and I really make sure there's no sand that's gonna be mobile with the aluminum that can get down in the mold. Just wanted to slow down the video and take a moment so you can see how smooth that turned out. So you can see the aluminum has a pretty good chance of making a good re reproduction of that. I'm not sure if it helps or not, but I go ahead and preheat my crucible and put aluminum in it and this little tiny toaster oven off to the side and get it about 500 degrees. So that way when I turn the fire on, it's not on a uh, cool crucible that potentially could crack it. I don't know if it's gonna help or not. I think it would, I don't know. I'm just trying it out to see what happens. There's my gray hair, I'm old. This day sucked, it was really windy and every time I heard something flop around I'd get kind of scared and hope that something wouldn't be flying down there to hit the uh, furnace with the molten aluminum in there. Because you don't really have good peripheral vision when you wear that mask that I use. And that's another thing, if you cast aluminum make sure you get your protective gear on because it only takes one mistake to uh, really wreck you and I should probably get more protective gear. 
Well, these furnaces come with the what we call these little salad tongs. I use the salad tongs to basically drop aluminum down into the crucible when it's when it's hot. Um, you really need a nice pair of tongs. Don't be messing with the salad tongs that come with these kits. And I went ahead and packed up two. I didn't show it on camera, but I packed up two of these molds. <laughs> yeah, fire, fire, fire's cool. So I can pretty much tell most likely it's going to be a successful pour because I can see the aluminum come up through the riser in the back. All right, hang on to your pants. Here's the climax of my video. We get to see what it looks like. Here we go. That yeah, looks pretty good. It's all shiny right out of the cast, too. And it's upside down. I'll realize that in just a second. There we go. Good job, Damon. There we go. You can actually see it pretty good. Yeah, that came out smooth. I'm proud of that one. All right. Let's see if Numero Dos is going to make it or not. Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks as good as the first one. I was smart this time. I turned it around real quick, too, so you could see it for the camera. Yep, real good. Here, I'm just pointing out how the aluminum flowed through the cavity, or through the sand, whatever you want to call it. I use my mill just to cut the gates off the mold. I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to get it off, but this is easy for me. I just clamp it down to the top and then just go ahead and uh, offset it by a thickness of a paper and then just go right over it. And then I'll clean the back up on a uh, belt sander. I have a little Scotch-Brite Dremel attachments right here. And I'm using a mask because whenever you use abrasives or you're grinding on metal, you don't want that stuff in your lungs. You probably will live a little longer if you take care of yourself. Yay! You made it to the end of the video. Let's check these out. This is after I polished them. So now you can get a close-up of them. Yeah, they look pretty good. The back of them I didn't clean up too well. Um, I normally don't put a whole lot of effort in that because that's the back. So anyway, thanks again for watching my YouTube channel. Thanks for helping me build a subscriber base. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that now. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, hope to see you again. Thanks again for watching.